Hello, let's play some dominoes. It's time for pips. We'll start with the easy puzzle, shall we? All right, we've got a zero that goes into something that needs to make a five. Oh, and we've got, oh, we've, we've got that twice, actually. Interesting. So one of them will be, a f one of them will have a one and we'll have a four on the other end. The, I, mean, I don't know if it'll go this way. I'm just, I'm just doing this to illustrate. One of them will have a three and I'll have a two on the other end. So we could, the, actually, this is correct by, by coincidence. Could it work the other way? Let's just find out. <laughs> just kind of curious. Uh, let's put it the other way and see. It can. Yeah, it could have worked either of two ways, regardless of which way I started. So there we go. Two possibilities for today's easy puzzle. Let's try the medium. Okay, we need a six here that connects to an equivalence region, and that will be the six one. And it can't go this way because that'll block that zero down there. So it goes this way, which means we need a zero one here to, to finish that, which means we need a four one here. This is flowing very cleanly so far. We now need two, which can be made up of a double one or a two zero. Um, and the greater than four is a five or a six. Actually, it can only be the five right now. So five one. We still have both possibilities for the two. Oh, one moment. Okay, sorry, I just had a knock on the door there. Let's see where I was. I can't remember. Oh, right. Right. Oh, right. It's eight. We have to figure out. So it'll be either the six or the four. It'll be the six because then we have, oh, this could go, all right, okay. So we'll make the six out of eight out of, sorry, we'll make the eight out of six and two more pips, which can mean either of these configurations. So once again, either of these will work. The two was not constrained. And there we go. That was the medium puzzle. Let's try the hard one. Okay, so we have a 20, which could be uh, three sixes and a two. It could be two sixes a five and a three. Yeah, that's pretty open-ended. Could be two sixes and two fours, although, yeah, we do have two fours. Okay, never mind. That's too much to, to think about right now. We need a six that pops up into the nine. That's a little bit constrained, maybe. I mean, if we did a double six, for instance, this would be very difficult to achieve. Um, in fact, well... It might, it might weirdly just be possible if we sort of just put a bunch of... Actually, no, I don't think it is. Because we'll need a, an entire domino in there in somewhere. What's the, in some way. What's the absolute lowest total domino we have? It's f worth four in total. You know, something, something would have to go here or here. Which means the absolute lowest that we know will be in in the nine before anything else goes in it is four, which means the whole rest of it can't add up to more than five. And the other lowest that will be in these two remaining cells would be a zero and a one because we only have one zero. So we've already accounted for at the very least five in this nine, which means the thing that comes off the six can't be greater than four. That's not a huge constraint, but it's something. Well, that's actually a bit of a constraint because most of our sixes are connected to high things. So actually, it's either a one or a two. You know, it's here or it's or it's this one. I don't know. Is that helpful? What about this one? Can it connect to the less than four? Yes, it can. With a three. Okay. All right. I'm still not quite sure what to do with that unfortunately. Oh, we have two 20s. That's interesting. Hadn't really fully taken that in. Making one 20 is not very difficult. Making two, a total of 40 in eight cells. That's a lot. And we know one of our sixes definitely is accounted for already. So how, far, how high do we get with our sixes and fives? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25... 31, um, 31 plus 12. Yeah, okay, 43. Okay, that's not very difficult. But that is using a lot of sixes and fives. Um, 
I don't really want to get into the sort of adding everything up route, which I get, ah, you know what? We do have quite a lot of the grid in counts. Maybe that's, maybe that is what I should be doing. We have nine, 10, 16, uh, plus 40 is 56, 61. Uh, we have 78 in area, 78 in areas that are expressly numbered. 78, oh boy. Um, should I, I'm trying to figure out how much I, if I should just go with this. I'm not really sure what else to do right now. So let's see, 5, 10, 15. Is that right? We have 104. So I can't tell if this is going to be useful at all. I also am not 100% sure if I've counted both of these correctly. That would leave a total of, what, 26 to play with in the remaining cells? That's impossible. Oh, wait, no, I've, I have this double equivalence region. We have a total of 26 that must go into one, two, three, four, five cells. That doesn't seem possible, does it? I mean, it is technically possible. We'd have to use sixes for that. I think I might have miscounted this. No, the 78 is definitely correct. Let's see. 26, 35, 45. 56, 63, 71, 76, 88, uh, 88, 95, 100, now I have 102, okay, oh no, <laughs> I did count something wrong either last time or this time or both times. This is terrible. This is a terrible thing to watch. Sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause the video and count it once more so you don't need to, to watch me do it in, in real time. Okay, I counted it twice more and got a total of 99 in the dominoes. So I'm pretty sure that's right, which gives me 21 that needs to be covered in the less than four, this blank one here, this two-sized equivalence region, and this other blank one down here. So does that tell me anything interesting. I mean, 21, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's still, you know, a decently high average to cover in five cells, especially since this one can only max out at three. So if that one were to be three, then we'd need 18 in these other four. And assuming these two were sixes, the equivalence would have to be at least three. That's not that difficult. I'm not learning very much. Okay, that might have all been a basically a waste of time. I mean, it's probably not a waste of time, but I'd, I'm not... This, I think this would be a lot easier if I were doing this on paper or had some way to like mark things on the grid or something, but I don't. So what do I do instead? What's the simpler way I can be thinking about this? What did I say the highest that could be pointing into this nine is? I think I might've said four, um, which we have six, 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 five, six, one, and six, two. Yeah, right. That's right. We get down to, to something as easy as six, two. And then we have seven to play with there, which is not very difficult. Right. I'm not sure how to think about this, unfortunately. Um, what about the one pointing down from the one into the nine? That feels difficult. The lowest this could be would be one, three. The lowest this could be would be six one. I mean, this isn't this isn't terrible. We still have five to play with in the nine. Actually, yeah, but the oh, the only thing that could be then would be this two three, 
then we'd need a zero five here. I mean, that's a lot of ifs. It's not really a great conclusion, is it? That's only the case if the one we're pointing down and we had six one rather than six two. Actually, I guess what that does say is we couldn't have the six two pointing here, right? Because doesn't this break it immediately? It does. Right. Okay. So if the one is pointing down, the only way that it could work would be this six one. I think that is at least true. It's still an if, but it's less a less ridiculous if because it's only a single if. And then the zero would point into this. That's not terrible. But again, it's not it's not hugely fascinating. Um I mean, how do we make the five? One, four, or two, three. So we can't make five, zero in this configuration. This 20 can't have anything lower than a three now that it has a five in it. That's not hugely interesting either, I don't think. Is the 17 interesting? Not really, I don't think. I have no idea what's going on with this. Should I just keep trying some things? I don't know what to, how to make progress in this puzzle. Um, I, I, I just don't know what to do. Less than four, should I do the classic thing and put in exactly three, since that's often what these less thans are about? I don't know, I just don't, I don't feel like I have any basis on which to be trying anything. I'm sure there is something, but I just, I'm just not sure what it is. I guess I can be in the back of my mind remembering that we need the non non numbered cells to add up to 21. So this would take 10 away, which means we need 11 left minus 3 is 8. So only 8 so exact well in this in this particular version exactly 8 go in these two void cells which could be a 6 a 2, 5 and 3. Um, this would then be a six. I mean, this is all just nonsense though. You know, I mean, I'm not like, I'm just trying things. This would then be a three, which would have to be this. I mean, this doesn't work, but that's not a surprise. It was put placed in there arbitrarily. This could be a six, five, I guess. Um, 70, I mean, this doesn't work, but again, I'm not surprised that it doesn't, that it, well, actually, I guess we could do this. Maybe this will work. It will. Okay. I don't think I've learned anything. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was useful. I guess it did help me to have taught it up the um, the kind of ex external, the sort of non-numbered areas. That was helpful. Was it? Was I right? Was my count right? Um, let's see. 10, 20. Yeah, I was. It was 21. So that was correct after a couple of recounts. Um yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the right way to solve this was. It feels as though there would have been a number of different configurations that might have worked out in this puzzle. But I'm, I don't know. I don't know what, what I should have done, really. There we go. Anyway, those were the pips. Back tomorrow. Bye for now.